Welcome to Slasher Sunday. So, Ghostface, are you ready to discuss your latest film? That's a yes. Is that a yes? That's a yes. This would be a no? And this Wait, is a yes? That's a yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Screen six. Yeah. Uh, we already did this in a spoiler re discussion almost a year ago now. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Yeah. Which That's means that Scream 7 should come out in like two months. Oh my God, please. I hope so. No, I hope not because they haven't even started <laughs> no, it. No, it's not. So to get it done in two months would not be <laughs> that good. That would be crazy. It though. would not be good. But it has like, been confirmed is. that Christopher Landon is supposed to be directing it, writing and directing it, or something. He's involved in one of those departments. I think it's directing and writing. Mm. I think it's both, which is exciting. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. Um, this one, of course, is being helmed by the same guys, Radio Silent, who did Scream 5, as well as Ready or Not. Mm. And this movie gives a little homage, sort of, a cameo homage-ish thing to Ready, to Ready or, or Not, not yeah. with the not uh, good-looking in the slightest <laughs> Samara Weaving. Yes. <laughs> now, this is, this is honestly... To me, this might be the hottest she's ever looked in mm. any film. I don't know what it is about this one, but dear Lord. It's her dress. <laughs> it's just, I mean, she's I mean, she's incredible in literally everything I've ever seen her in. But I don't know, there's something about this. When we saw this in theaters, I was like, whoa. Mm -hmm. I've never seen Samara look this good. So it was definitely, spoilers, guys. It was definitely sad yeah. to watch her die so early. But I had the same exact thing happen to me in 1996. Yeah. Right? Drew Barrymore. I was obsessed with Drew Barrymore in high school. And when I saw she was leading a like a like a Halloween type slasher movie, you know, yeah. because obviously that was my favorite film. Um, and she even says her favorite movie at the beginning is you know Halloween and says Michael Myers. And I was like, oh God. <laughs> and then she got killed, and I was like, what? I hate this movie. No. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they kind of did the same thing. I don't know what would be my favorite. What would be your favorite opening of a Scream movie? Um, I mean, the honestly, the OG is great, for sure. It's the most iconic. Yeah. Obviously. Um, I always forget which one. Is it Scream 4? Where they're, or maybe it's... They're watching a movie within a yeah. movie. Within a movie. Four. Is that 4? Mm -hmm. That one, I would say, is also one that i really like because i think it's i love how meta it is of course and i like seeing all of the uh, iterations you know i really i actually i really like the jenna ortega one in five yeah that one's wonderful um, as well i like hearing about the modern filmmaking yeah. of like hereditary and the babadook and all that stuff but i really do like this opening mm -hmm. because at first I really love it, right? Not only do you get like the hottest Samara weaving mm -hmm. and she's talking about like slasher films and like how there's the new rule set up every time that, you know, the, the clock has turned forward mm -hmm. and whatnot. And basically she's kind of setting up her own death by showing that we're in the modern era and you shouldn't in a horror movie um, online date. Yeah. Right, because that really puts you in a vulnerable position. Yeah. I, and I said this to you, and I, I'm assuming this is this has happened in the world. I just can't, for the life of me, imagine that someone this beautiful mm. would be like blind dating some dude. But it it happens. It definitely happens. Sure. I just I I can't imagine this chick has any problems getting a date. But regardless, she's into what she's into. She sets herself up for this. So we get this cool little opening with her and she, I like that she gets to use her Australian accent because she doesn't usually yeah. use it. She has to use her, you know, an American accent. Mm -hmm. um, but she's let in and she, she gets herself killed and, um, and then it's revealed, the killer reveals themselves. And that got me super amped. I was like, oh, we're really, because remember the marketing for this one was like, they say it in the film is like there's something different about this one yeah right and the tone of the trailer felt very dark 
Yes. Much different than than a normal scream film. And yeah. I was like, okay, this could definitely be the one that really um, goes for it. And so we got this. We got this opening, and you know, you, you reveal that it's Flash from the Spider Man movies. <laughs> Jason is his name, which is a reference to something later. Um, and I was like, oh, this, this, I like this. I like this idea that we're going to know who the killers are throughout the film mm. and they're not. And I really was excited about this prospect mm. of like watching behind the scenes. I know that it breaks the mold, but I don't care. That's what I want. I mm. want to see something different. And what would have been cool to me instead of this family lineage bullshit that they have to throw into every film and it's Richie's family. The ending to me is just super, super stupid. But what would have been really neat had it been Richie's roommates like it was with Jason and Greg or something. What was the other guy's name? I'll find it in the notes somewhere. We never meet him, so you just hear it in the background like once. Um, but what would have been really rad had it been this kind of deconstruction of the screen films with us being in on the events behind the scenes, mm -hmm. right? Where we're kind of following the killers as much as the protagonists and seeing how they're like switching out mm -hmm. and calling each other and planning it and, 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 and duping people. Yeah. Right. Right. And really seeing, as opposed to just the really long monologues at the end of the just expo exposition dumps, like yeah, that kind of that's stuff. That's pretty like standard. It's just fare standard for fare for this, and yeah. I, I, it's old as shit to me. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I didn't like it the first time. Right. <laughs> I'm not gonna like it the sixth. So I'm not the target audience for that stuff. So when I saw that we were getting this reveal that we were going to know who the killers were from the go, from the go, yeah. right from the get go, I was like, this is exciting. This is interesting. And then we killed them. And then it's like, no, it's a murder mystery again. And it was like, all right, fine, fuck it, whatever. Yeah. I, um, I mean, I'm okay with like the exposition dump. I like that idea a lot though, that we could see like behind the scenes of the killers, like point of view. Question: Have you seen be, uh, Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon? Have I ever shown you that no, movie? I don't think uh, so. Go ahead. Um, but what I like, what I think that this like this part of the Scream franchise is doing, like especially with Sam, um, is I really like the direction that they're taking the final girl. I think that there's a lot of dark stuff that's being explored with her character, mm -hmm. and that's kind of like the shining point of these films for me. Like I really love that they're not like it's kind of why it's a similar reason why I really love Halloween 2018 because they take Laurie Strode and it's like the trauma of her past and everything. But obviously with Samantha, like we're seeing it much more condensed and like real time kind of with like how she's coping with things and especially how it's affecting her mental health and given her mental like health history with her father and everything. I love all of that. Um, but I don't think that this necessarily does anything super unique with the killers themselves. Um, like you said, it is kind of just a standard like murder mystery who done it throughout. But there's obviously a lot of other things in this that I really love. And most of it, and I think that usually this is why screen movies work, is because the characters work for me and for a lot of people. Um, but with this opening, I think that it is, I mean, it's, it's great to have Samara be talking about slasher films and it obviously is a callback to the original by being like slasher fans horror fans like that become like that also have mental health issues like are you know trying to recreate the movies in a way yeah. which is obviously you know just like the first one but i love that they get killed off because this one isn't about the movies which ghostface which i yeah you know even says like gives a fuck about yeah. movies so which it's, is a it's, great line it's fantastic it's really wonderful um so this one is more about family again which is pretty similar to two <laughs> in some ways right like but it's a little different sure but so there's two things there with that i have the problem with so as far as sam goes it's like you're setting her up to have this dark passenger 
mm-hmm. like Dexter, right? And and she's being compelled by her father to kill and be like him. And she's fighting this off. She's visit with, with this psychiatrist at the beginning. She's trying to open up, but of course, like people are scared of her. He pushes her away because he's frightened from her. Everybody thinks that she's responsible for the deaths. And, you know, she's basically being framed, which we get later on revealed that it was one of the killers who was, you know, promoting this idea online and how easy it was to push her as the killer. But I think where they kind of drop the ball in that idea is that throughout the film, they don't really ever set it up to us or to the characters that are closest to her for much more than like a few minutes that Sam is actually the killer. And I Mm. think that had you been able to play around with that more, with this notion of like, even, even taking it to the place where Sam is not even sure she's not the killer, mm. yeah. right? Where she might start having blackouts, I and mean, she like wakes up and she has like a freaking knife in her hand and is bloody with a with a dead body sure. in the room, and she's like, "What the fuck happened?" Sure. Like I can't remember. Yeah. And people, and I swear I didn't do this. And you're like, "Shit, I don't know." Yeah, and I know we've talked about this before. Like we can't base a movie off of like potential future installments, but that's kind of what I was meaning about like the trajectory of her character is that I think that with Um, at least my hope is that with future installments that she's going to go into those places more because yes, I would love for her to be, I would love for it to be more ambiguous of like, is she or isn't she? Because I think that especially with this one, like she's receiving a ton of like public backlash about her. Like there's online hate, there's like in-person hate. People are consistently like doubting her anyway. Like they do have moments of doubt but they kind of like her friends and her sister, but they do band together when things get really intense. But there are a few moments where they're like, well, I don't know, it could be any of us. But specifically, like the the ancillary people in her life all have these like, they're not sure. And with how this ends too, and her like, um, like proclivity for violence, <laughs> like how easily she falls into it and how... I think she is enjoying it to an extent. I definitely feel like there is a part of her that is like into it. I'm just curious about how that, like all those factors could affect that character. And it would be great to see them take it instead of like final girl rising from the ashes as a Phoenix, like final girl, like plummeting into the depths of hell because she's been told from all sides, like you are this, you are this. And, you know, kind of finally uh, like succumbing to it. But are these ancillary characters that you're referring to the ones that end up being the killers? No, no. Um, I'm talking about, about like, like her random, therapist okay. and yeah, like that lady on the street. That kind like, of like all the, the other people. That, the two you know, most prominent ancillary characters around her are sure. the killers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So they wouldn't yeah. really be included in the people who are like, hmm, I wonder if she's doing. I know. Yeah, I mean, they're already like, yeah, they're already like, oh, of course you're a killer. Like they're kind of projecting that on her. Well, yeah. But I, mean, I they... just like, yeah. So do they like the whole revenge thing mm-hmm. here? Because they don't have any interest in the screams. Well, the stab movies. Right. Right. Like this is the first time mm-hmm. in the franchise where we've really seen that these guys don't care about films at all. No. Right? Um, I don't remember if Emma Roberts cared. Well, I guess this is, I mean, I guess never mind. This is the second time, and this is because they're doing, like, a sequel to the requel, which is basically a remake of the second film. Right? Yeah. They're in college. Yeah. And then it's the family that's right. coming back to right. avenge the boyfriend. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, I, I guess. I think yeah, it works really well in with, that sense. With Nancy Loomis, which, of yeah. course, is named after the girl who plays Annie in Halloween. Um, but I don't know. I I don't know. That just so, it's just yes, poetry, it rhymes. I, I heard you, George Lucas. I know, I love it. I don't. I know you don't. But I, don't. I think it's great and I think it's and I do like that there are like some things that are I feel like the for me, I like the callbacks, I like the similarities, and I think that this I think that it does a good job at not making them like insane and like so i mean they're on the nose i guess if you're a scream fan but like if i don't know i like everything with mindy and like i was talking to you about it on this like we're kind of jumping all over the place but like when she's on the subway like that parallels randy's death 
Mm -hmm. like with being in a public space and it's like you know breaking out of like where you think you would be safe but you're not safe but at the same time i feel like in the modern society being on like crowded transportation is a place where you would have your guard up and be like because you're surrounded by strangers and everything so i don't know i like everything that they do with this but um do you think that the next film then is going to be like like scream three in some way i don't know what freedom the writers are allowed mm. I, I don't know if like execs or kevin williamson himself or i don't know i don't know the franchise well enough to know who has to sign off on what yeah. was this like what the filmmakers wanted to do straight up um did they want to take it in a different direction and they wouldn't let them i, I honestly don't know so hiring christopher landon to helm this next one um he is a pretty unique writer who does like to kind of play around with tropes in a new way so but he 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 very much loves to inject a lot of comedy into his stuff which you know he's a perfect fit for this franchise There's, i don't think we're ever going to get like a 100 percent straight across the board like serious tone scream film i don't even know if that would work i don't because think so. that's not its brand Right. It's yeah. brand is, is to be tongue in cheek and self-aware and like, you know, winky to the audience, um, which, you know, I'm just I'm typically not a fan of that yeah. uh, style of, of filming. But if I what are you going to say? Well, I was just going to say that I think like aesthetically, this is like the darkest screen film. Sure, as but as far as like the look of everything goes, because like yeah. you said earlier, like the trailer definitely made it seem like it was going to be like darker thematically and i don't i don't find that it is that much darker thematically than the other ones to be honest but i do think that like the look of it like it has like a grittiness to it mm -hmm. that isn't in the other films that i quite like i would say my favorite scene as far as like a chase sequence or a um thrilling moment of of the franchise uh off the top of my head i i don't know maybe i'd have to think of something else but pretty sure at the moment might be my favorite scene from this franchise is the convenience store I was gonna say shotgun sequence yeah. which is funny because a lot of people don't like that because oh, he uses a gun which it. is literally the dumbest complaint I've ever <laughs> heard towards this franchise ever I, I yeah it blows my mind that people are like that better not be ghost face with a gun because remember when the picture came out oh I love this it. Had, he had a shotgun they're like yeah Ghostface doesn't use guns. And then I posted a picture of literally every single Ghostface with a gun <laughs> in the entire franchise up until this point. Right, which there the, was like eight of them. At the, or, it's just because they are so many unmasked. But they were unmasked. Point, right? and, and I'm like, like the difference. such an arbitrary, yeah, stupid ass thing. It is. Once they take the mask off, they can use guns all day. Right. But when they have the ghost face mask on, no, it has to be all stabbing. Implements. But see, like, even that, that is the too, dumbest fucking rule I've right? ever heard in my life. Even that, like those previous ghost faces, like if they are fans of the films, like they're trying to emulate something. So using knives while they're in costume, in the ghost face costume, like they're trying to channel something there. Right. And these aren't. But these guys yeah, aren't. They're like fans. they're just like trying to punish Samantha and her sister. But like, so it and doesn't matter. To point out that more than likely, because we you never know. There's three killers this time. They yeah. really ramped it up this time. Yeah um scream three is the only one with one killer mm -hmm. this is the only one with three killers um i wonder if they did that just to even out the amount of numbers <laughs> so like, there's 10 of them one? yeah right <laughs> although Maybe. technically there would be 12 because we mm. do get two killers so there's five killers in this movie that's true there there's technically so is many five. <laughs> there's so but, like, many the first two even are... though the first two one of them never kills yeah so the okay the fact that like they stopped them yeah right after their first kill mm -hmm. is one of those things it's just a scream convenience right it's it's just kind of an eye roll thing to me like how would they know that these guys were like just gonna kill mm. right when they'd never done it before they planned it in secret they were like not over the phone maybe they have their house bugged he's a cop i could fill in the blank but sure. what i was gonna get at was that because there are three killers in certain sequences, you don't know who the killer is. And and this is pretty prominent throughout the franchise. You're like, it was it Stu or was it Billy? Mm. Was it, you know, 
whatever. So, except for in Scream 3. You know, right. It, and you're it, like, it, it's, it's him. Yeah. Um, Ro- what's his name? I was going to say Rowan. I was going to say Rowan, too. But too. I was like, it's, I, don't, um, I don't See, I'm not the Scream <laughs> fan. I know. I, know I am, too, but I'm not. Ro- I, I am the Scream fan, I mean. But I'm horrible with names. I thought it was... It's not Rowan. It's not it's Rowan. It's not Rowan. <laughs> I'm pretty I sure on that one. I, I would know it if I heard it. Roman. It, Roman. Thank it's you. Roman. Thank you. I was God. Get, I was getting close. Uh, but anyway, so with this one, um, you never know who the killer is. So more than likely to me, the ga- the uh, convenience store one is the dad. Yeah. I, th- I think and that's it true. And it would make the most sense for him to gravitate towards guns he's a cop absolutely he right? would know how to use them yes. and yeah i so for this watch through i definitely think we were paying attention to because we've, we've watched already we know that who the killers are we were paying attention to when ghostface was killing people yeah. like and who it was yeah. so there's definitely a big moment specifically with gail which there's a lot of we both have criticisms of everything that's handled with gail but it's also not only just her character, but Ghostface is, it's the, um, the roommate, yeah. the girl roommate. Yeah. And when we were watching it, it was just Quinn. Kind of, Quinn. Yeah. So, cause Gail has like this big yeah. boyfriend, yeah. Ridiculous. like full grown man, absurd, like six foot something. And she takes him out. Like, and even, like, okay, because I was kind of thinking of it, like, so Quinn's dad's a cop, like, he probably gave her some self-defense lessons, and, like, there are ways that you can use your weight to, like, you know, whatever, right? No, she physically, she physically overtakes him. Yeah. This is the problem. There's no way. Because she even points out in that moment, all those muscles didn't save him. So it's, like, pointed out that he is a big guy. You can see he's a big guy, right? So, like she could not physically if she takes him from behind and wrestles him without a noise that gail can hear so she fully overpowers him to a point where he can't even make noise to alert his girlfriend mm-hmm. there's no way dude there's no way and then the icing on the cake she throws him across the room yeah to scare gail that's the part that and it's, it's like, like what i don't know she's channeling her inner betsy Freaking Palmer, you know, Pamela Voorhees. Because she's not like, she doesn't look particularly like muscular. Like we no, see her like no. in she's pajamas, like she's small. And so that's like, it's a bummer because I do feel like that. That should have been the dad. Should have It either should have been the dad or she shouldn't have had a boyfriend there. Like if it hadn't, sure. if she hadn't had the boyfriend, then it's like, I can believe that she's going up against Gail. Of course. Oh, Gail sure. is like, like, you know. She's skinny, like yes. she's tiny. Yeah. So that would have been a fine fight, but the fact that the boyfriend's there just does make it kind of like unbelievable, which it sucks because it just it it definitely takes down that that part of the movie for me. And then I am with you, like I do think Gail should have died. <laughs> I oh, I am fine with legacy characters dying. Like I'm glad Dewey passed away. You know, like i like his death scene a ton i think it's super cool you know and they're like it's an honor or whatever like all that i really love and but with gail like i i don't know the point of keeping her in the franchise much longer because i think it would be cool for them to kill off all these old legacy characters because they have a new cast of legacy characters now like they have the new crew you know yeah the core four they have the core four so okay Getting to my second biggest gripe with the film by far and away is that this film even like sets itself up in this way. And it really pissed me off watching it the second time to be like, you guys suck. (laughs) So we have Mindy doing her Randy, right? Which is her uncle, right? Yeah. Um, So she's doing her, her whole rant about it you know, the rules, which they always have to do in these movies. It's fine. It's it's a staple I expected. But in that, she very much points out the fact that, like, main characters can be killed, legacy characters, cannon fodder at this point, and any one of, like, the main characters can be the killer. None of this happens. (laughs) None of this happens. All your rules are for shit. Yeah. So that to me really irked me because they're, they're, they're basically promising the audience 
like, listen, here's the rules. And in every other Scream film, the rules come to pass. Mm -hmm. These are like, these are the things they're letting you know as an audience. Like, here's what to prepare yourself for. Yeah. They do three. They do one legacy character. Mm -hmm. And I should say two legacy characters, sort of, which Kirby would be one. Yeah. Kind of. I, I guess she wouldn't be a legacy because she's part of that new trilogy, yeah. four to six. So you got one legacy character who's been there from the beginning. And then you've got three main characters, right? With Kirby, Mindy, and Chad. Mm -hmm. They kill all four of them in this movie, making it like they really lived up to what they said in that scene. Like, holy shit, they killed three mains yeah. and a legacy? That's, that's freaking ballsy. Yeah. And they take 100% of them away. Yeah. They're like, no, just kidding. We didn't kill any of them. Yeah. They all survive. And it's the way they survive that pisses me off, right? Like, it's just how unfazed most of them are <laughs> by their stabbings. The fact yeah. that Mindy runs up that one, after having been stabbed. I think I said this stabbed, last time, too. Like, she's got... I don't kind of care drugs how many drugs body. she has. There's no way. That's my explanation, though. That, that is, she's that running is my away. explanation is that. There's no way that Chad. Chad is much Is like harder. taking his mask off and you. kissing. I agree Dude, with you. I don't think no he would way. even be conscious if he was alive. No, he'd be dead. Um, but I do think like with how much they're stabbing him, like literally like here too. And it's been, I mean, what, at least. 20 to 30 minutes since that happened when, oh, yeah. like, the final showdown goes down. on. So it's like, yeah, he's lost so much blood anyway. But even if, like, he miraculously, like, survives, I definitely don't think he'd be conscious at all. Gail um, got stabbed one time, yeah. right? One single time. Like, here. And she passed out from blood loss yeah. within a minute or two? Yeah, she two passes minutes? out quick. Chad's in there bleeding out for 20 minutes from Molt. I mean, yeah, like they stabbed lot. him 15 times because at least. And that's a great scene, though, too, because it's like, I think you had said it, too. It might be the first time we see two, two ghost, ghost face yeah. killers killing at, at the, the same, same time. time. Yeah. But I love it because they're both just like going to town on him and it's scary. And then they do the like the, you know, the, the knife wipe together, which I love. <laughs> and they also um, have this really corny moment where it's like it's just scream conveniences. Scre scre Screenveniences. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna try, but it's yeah. Because conveniences, it's hard to say with an S at the conveniences with an S at the beginning. Um, but there's this moment where uh, Tara, Tara, or Tara, Tara, Tara. I feel like they both they say both. Uh, Is it Tara? Tara, Tara, <laughs> Tara. Tara. Okay, so Tara. I'll just call her Tara. Um, Tara's like. You know, essentially like, oh, it's like a bummer. Chad died. And they're like, <laughs> we got so like someone yeah. survived. <laughs> like, yeah. Yelling like literally the second she says that. Yeah. And I'm like, they're like he's here. And she's like, bro, yeah. bro. Yeah. Bro. We were also laughing too. I know we just like immediately after like jumped to the end in this discussion kind of, but um, yeah. we're laughing when the two of them are walking away at the end because they both have been like stabbed, stabbed and hurt times. and they're just like walking towards the ambulance Dude. like there would they, they like, just like walk they, off like... to the sunset yeah they're just walking away it's funny i um yeah it's a it's a kind of a corny ending definitely on this rewatch i feel that for sure but up until that point i do really like everything in like aside from maybe the like typical like screen monologues which i was fine with honestly they're fine they're not anything special but everything within the theater like i love that they have all this memorabilia around them yeah. i love that richie's easter eggs uh, yeah all the easter eggs i love that richie's movie is playing and of course yeah. that it's burning at the end yeah. and everything with samantha too like at the very end when she's putting on her father's like yeah. ghost face costume and everything i loved it i loved it and then especially yeah. whenever she's like i'm i'm not a killer like you're wrong about me She's like, but you did mess with her family, so and like kills him anyway. I'm like, girl. Well, because girl. she gets because she gets Tara's permission. Like she, yeah, I she guess. gets like self conscious in front of Tara. Yeah, and is like, is kind of stops and is like, oh, I don't want my sister to see me like yeah. this, right? And then she gives her the look like, like you're gonna like kill you, him. You right? got like, You got to kill him. Yeah. 
we're not letting him off, right? Which is a very scream thing. And and one thing I very much appreciate about right. this franchise because they always are like, no, we are killing this yes. killer. And the fact we get a new killer every single time mm-hmm. is my favorite thing about the franchise. Oh, absolutely. For sure. Yeah, I love it, it. It's the only thing that like this franchise has that almost literally no other slasher franchise has. Yeah. There's probably one or two off, you know, that I'm forgetting right off the top of my head, but regardless, it's, it's very super unique rare. for that. Yeah. And it's it's wonderful because it's like you go into each movie and you have characters that you are familiar with, but then you don't know who the bad guys are going to be and it's it's wonderful. What do yeah. you think about um I think we talked a little bit about this in our spoiler-free discussion, but the use of New York City as a setting well, what I was going to say about that is that our our character who is revealed at first to be the killer and then is killed off, uh, he's named Jason. And when he goes home, he watches a movie that, of course, this was immediately going to be likened to the second that they took this to New York, which is Jason Takes Manhattan. So to see that reference on the film, to be very self-referential like that, that I love. Mm-hmm. Because to me, that is horror fan service done correctly. Mm. It's showing a fairly obscure, like lesser known sequel in a franchise that like only real horror fans are gonna even know what the Mm. hell that's in reference to, right? Because most people who know the Friday the 13th franchise, they know some of the movies, but they don't know shit about the later entries. They might know like Freddy versus Jason and those late, late entries, but when it gets into that middle area with like new blood Mm -hmm. with like Jason versus Carrie, and then you've got him going to Manhattan, which I think people know the title, Mm -hmm. like they're familiar that that exists, Mm -hmm. but I don't think they could point out because it's like, I've seen the movie a million times. So the second I see footage from it, I'm like, Oh, that's cool. I love that. They put, Jason takes Manhattan in here. Now the film, of course, is out of order when they look back at the TV and I'm like, that's not they how it goes. That. <laughs> but that's scream like for you. Because I just Same recently thing with Halloween. Oh my god. That scene with Randy <laughs> in the first one is they so just, annoying like, to me. It so it's mean. not just that. It's the fact that when Bob gets killed, the guy screams out, like, No, the blood's too red. Why do you do that? And I'm like, Oh my god, are you serious, dude? I love it. So the yeah. blood. Oh, really? Let me go look back at that scene. Speaking of Randy, too, because like Mindy is probably my favorite, besides Samantha, because I really love Samantha. I also think Samantha is like super attractive too. Like, especially in this when I was watching it, like because she's so much taller than her sister, I think. I don't know. I was just like, and like when she puts on the ghost face costume, like, because that was to go off on this other little side thing, but we were talking about like the differences in heights between all the killers and how it's oh, like they yeah. always look the same height when yeah, they're sure. in the ghost face costume and it's so weird because like quinn is shorter like she's not that tall but like if samantha had been one of the killers like and another guy or something like you could totally see them being like you know like who Dude, is it like i don't know who it is i've met matthew lord in person he's oh like my gosh my height they're a little taller yeah even. he's tall. like so he's like six tall. four I'm 6'3". I think he was... Uh, you think he is a little taller than me. I think he's like 6'5", almost. Yeah, and, I, w- I would say Skeet he's... Skeet Ulrich? Short. It's probably like 5'10". <laughs> he's shorter, So for there's sure. no one yeah. dude. I know, like, there's a huge there, difference yeah. there. But anyway, um, she looks great in this movie. But I, I really love Mindy. I think that, like, everything with her, like, I love that she's the new Randy. I think, like, I love her fashion in this. And, like, she's just so... I love that she is like a queer character as well. And the scene when she is on the subway is still like, it's definitely one of my favorite scenes from this movie. You, la- you laugh a lot. I right? laugh so much on that because when she's just like, I'm with Ethan, AKA Ghostface, <laughs> like she gets so, and it's warranted. And like, that's what's so funny is that's like, yeah, like she's right. But well, I her love first her suspicion. two, her first two guesses of who the killer are. Yeah, are, are correct. The two killers. Are correct. She just doesn't know the dad, but. Um, I do think that the subway scene is a good example, though, of them using New York well, because I think that that is something that is a very uniquely New York. Wow, that's unique New York. What is this, Anchorman? New York experience. Um, Yeah, because, you know, in most every other city pretty much in the U.S., like we don't really have subways or trains that people use regularly. So um, I love that. And I like, you know, the fact that they're in an apartment and when... 
um, I guess it's Ethan, is in there in ghost face costume, like in their apartment killing people, and they have to put the ladder out to the neighbors. I think that's also another example of them using the city well, because you would be kind of trapped in, you know, like with the house, you can kind of like run out a window or whatever. You don't think the your... boyfriend would have ran across the street as fast as he could as soon as he saw the ghost face killer? Wouldn't he just be know. sitting on the I phone mean, yeah, trying he, to get their he attention? He should have. He should have called. I mean, he did call the police. Yeah, right? but he, but, to um, me, I think he would have immediately ran. Probably. I, I know, know it's like a few stories down, but dude, I I can get up to your house from that place in a minute, a minute and a half. Yeah. He could have got there. And then I don't understand how the killer gets out of the apartment. I know. We because were Tara about this. and Chad, Chad are at the door. Yeah. Some, Tara and someone. It's Chad. Are like at the front door. And there's no other exit out I of think, that place that I'm aware of. I think that they leave. I think that they go down when they realize. Because like, I think he's like pulling her. She's like, oh my God, like you have to go back. Mm, but I think he kind okay, of pulls her he down because it's like they're both, you know. But they, okay. I don't know. That's what I think happens. And then face leaves out the door as far as the carpenter sisters go i don't know i don't know who's hotter they're both really hot they both are jenna ortega i know is like everybody that's watching the channel is like jenna ortega because <laughs> she's, she's like hot, she is sure. and she's definitely like the um the what is it that you always say what scream queen she, no oh. there's something else that you're i don't know but she's like the in right now in the horror world for sure she's making all kinds of horror content and she's fantastic and i love her and i do think she's hot and she's wonderful but i just because i'm shorter i think is probably why i like samantha because she's taller and i like the height difference and i also just like you know generate like tara in this like she is the little sister like yeah. she's very adorable and very like you know she's trying to assert her like she wants to live her life and be free and everything and samantha's like responsible and even though she doesn't like have her shit together she does have her shit together though like she is like as she goes and tries to get banged by some freaking She idiots. has it together in terms of, like, she's prepared. Like, she wants to be prepared for, like, danger. Like, that's what she's... Which is, like, the whole for. theme of this movie. Yeah. And she has to let her go to fend for herself in the yeah. end, which she does, and they both live. Yeah. Um, which I love. Yeah, that's fine. And I like all of that stuff. And I, I don't really have any issues with Sam and Tara in the film. I think all of the stuff with them... I just think the setup of Sam being this psycho potentially with the dad and all this stuff is, I don't know. It's not really fleshed out much, but hopefully, you know, in the next one it will. But I felt like this was the right one to do it in because everyone was suspecting her of, mm. of her being the killer. So it's like you could have really played on that in this one, but you didn't. And now it's very obvious that she's not. And I just, I can be or super maybe. hard. I guess you could in the in the seventh film. How would you feel about how would you feel about Sam being the killer in seven? I would I would like it. I already said like I would like to see her go. But would you down. be okay with it if she killed Tara? Would you believe that would be something she would do? Right now, no, <laughs> definitely not. I, I would think that I would be insane. I, I would think, think that, that would be. I don't that think would that would work at all. all. But that doesn't mean that she would necessarily be going after Tara. I don't she think you could be going after like totally other people. But I don't think they have I don't, the balls know, I don't to think do it's it. gonna I don't think I don't think she's going to become one, but I do really like the idea that you were talking about earlier with her having like moments where it's like she's not sure if she was like conscious or whatever yeah. when there's killings happening. So But this was the film um, to do it in. Hmm. For me. Mm -hmm. You know. It is what it is. But it's funny because I just posted I don't think I don't know even know if you saw this on Instagram and Facebook on my Mount Rushmore mm. of Scream Queens, modern Scream Queens. Mm -hmm. And I, I couldn't pick a fourth, but I had Anya Taylor Joy and Mia Goth and Samara Weaving. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, I was so, I was like, oh man, there's so many choices for four. And so I posted about it online, like, what would, what would be your four? And like, who would you think I should put on here? And the most overwhelming majority of Jenna people, Ortega. Jenna Ortega. Oh, of course. Yeah. So, I mean, if I was to put her in four spot, then you have two. Mm -hmm. Of the four in this film, which is pretty wild. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, um, okay. I haven't even looked at my notes uh, throughout. <laughs> um, the stuff with Quinn's pretty funny when she's like with that guy. Yeah. And she's like, is that Paul? And he's like, who the fuck is Paul? I know. That stuff. And he's calling yeah. her baby and all that. That was funny. It kind of sucks funny. that she ends up being, um, you yeah. know, the killer. 
uh, but yeah, uh, how they so oh, when yeah, this is the other like questionable <sighs> scene. So when Danny is watching through the window, Quinn getting killed. Yeah, they're applying a prosthetic to her. Right. But having to make it look, but he goes in the bathroom, kills the dude that she's with. Yeah. Which is good because there's actually some pretty good, especially aftermath gore in this. You've got the dead body in the refrigerator that mm-hmm. Jason finds. Um, you got Jason's death, which is fine. Mm-hmm. You've got, um, you know, when uh, the, the girlfriend of Mindy falls off and hits the trash can and her face is all mangled. You've got, um, you know, sir, just there's there's some decent gore in here for yeah. sure. Um, but and, and then the guy in the shower as well. He's just kind of bloody, but whatever. Um, but they're just applying a prosthetic across her neck and making it look. I mean, how would you yeah, even do that? Because well, like, he is standing there. Danny is watching I know, the whole time. That's, I didn't even really honestly think about the fact that he was watching. I was more thinking about, like, just the, like, logistics of them applying a prosthetic. But I guess if they, like... Because I don't remember. I mean, she's there with them, right? See, is she, she out in the living room and then goes into that room? Or is she in there from the beginning? Because if she's in there from the beginning, then they they killed her guy and they put prosthetics on her or whatever. See, what would have worked and I think would have been cool, because they never do this in these movies. They never, like, sh- they never do, like, a saw thing where they show what mm. really happened and give you flashbacks yeah. to, like, how they did it. Yeah. Right? Which I... I honestly feel like this would have this would work better for the franchise to actually see it take place and to have this franchise actually play out more like Saw. That to have be, like the reveals at the end of just like have that music song. pretty much, but like a screen <laughs> version of that music, and then yeah. we get to see like clips of them yeah, doing that would these be things cool. and all these super interconnected, you know, things from the past would be super cool. But anyway, um what would be cool there and and the reason I Brent mentioned this is because I guess you could fill in the blank on, 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 you know, future viewings. But if like she had her window open and it was like really cold outside. Right. And she's like huddled up and she like has a scarf on. Uh, right. Yeah. And then a, he starts attacking her and the scarf's coming loose. Yeah. And then she like goes to the ground and then Danny's like trying to get their attention. Yeah. And then she comes out and her throat is slit. Mm-hmm. And then you watch it again and you're like, oh, she already had the prosthetic yeah. applied and she was hiding. That it. would be cool. Right. That would be really Something cool. like that. Sure. But she did just have sex with a guy. Yes. Now, I guess she could be like, no, I want to keep the scarf on. It's cold in here. I don't know. But I want to keep the scarf on. did she like she knew he was coming. She knew that that she was going to have to fake her own death in that moment. So she set that random guy up to get killed in her bathroom. Maybe she didn't know that he was coming. Maybe he just like showed up. We had to whisper in her ear, like, we're going to apply prosthetic. And then your dad and then dad's going to come with a fake body and replace you. Yeah. Okay. So that's the other part. So, okay. The prosthetic stuff, whatever. I don't know when that was. How we got a body in and out of there before the cops showed up is asinine. The fact that she is... Like, he switches out the body. That is definitely confusing. That's definitely, like, how did he do that? Like, because he says he something didn't. like, you'd be surprised what, like, a grieving father can get away with or whatever. There's, um, no, there's no way. Like, but... Okay, so, like, what would happen is, is the cops would be called, an ambulance would be called, the cops would come in on the scene, and then an ambulance would be right behind them. The paramedics would come and start checking the bodies for pulses and whatever, and obviously she would be alive. So he would have to come in right after everyone left we know the cops get there right like hiding after. in the closet with a body already he would have to and they be. switch him out but he would That's also have to, to bank on that they're not going to try to hide in the closet he's from like, the killer <laughs> and he's like uh uh, uh, I'm, uh i don't Stop. know what i'm doing here <laughs> yeah so oh, like no. the fact that he I came in and that... replaced the body pure nonsense yeah. like i do i like that they kill off somebody so you're not suspecting them like that to me i'm fine with that but i i definitely think that that execution is confusing because it doesn't make sense i mean they did the same thing in spiral yes right i mean this isn't this isn't like a new thing no it's it's not i'm just saying that it i like that that you know subverts your expectations you're like they're like look over here and then they do something over here like a magician yeah uh, I have a lot of notes, but I, I know don't, I don't want to. I don't want to <laughs> get into too many more things. Um, I like that Ghostface is killing people in in an open city. 
Mm -hmm. right as opposed to like small town woodsboro mm -hmm. like intimate one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. type stuff I, I do like when when killers are kind of let loose in the city and are, are running amok and, and kind of killing at random uh, anyone who gets in the way you know like jason takes manhattan when <laughs> when they go into the diner and he's killing people and stuff yeah. it's like you know get out of my way um although in that scene i would have much rather he like killed every single person in the in the diner but whatever that's my bloodlust um <laughs> but yeah I, I do really like that he is going around killing i think the look of the mask is cool i oh, like yeah. the degraded no yes. i think they probably borrowed this from halloween 2018 um well, leaving yeah. the masks of the past now could this guy because he is a detective in new york yeah and somehow you know he's able to acquire every mask every outfit yeah every stitch of evidence like you can't miss you can't be missing that much evidence you could misplace like a robe a mask yeah. maybe but for him to own literally every single thing I know. It that just has makes ever it been seem used like the police are so corrupt Oh my basically. God! The, like, and it's Woodsboro, care. right? That's who would have almost all of that stuff, right? And Except it, for and Dewey was like, oh yeah, the guy in charge <laughs> yeah. at that point, and he's not noticing that all of the Ghostface stuff is going missing. But Dewey, like, he doesn't. He like he retires he for retire. like between like four and five, mm. right? But he, so it could have gone missing during that. I guess time, it probably I no. Say. I guess it would have been when he was retired. Yeah, but regardless, he have ridiculous. Yeah. The fact that he has, I, I think it's great. And I, for me, it's one of those things where I'm like, I don't really give a shit. Yeah. Like it's, it's just convenience for the movie. Who cares? Right. But if we're taking it more literally, there's no way you're acquiring that much shit. Which once again, I don't know how much crossover there is, but there's a decent amount here. That's the same shit that's in the Saw movies, right? That's mm. Jigsaw. You got Eleanor, who's right. the collector and has like a bunch of traps mm. and stuff. So they're, they're, you can always find connections. Nothing's ever going to be original, right? You've, you, you're always going to have the obsessive collector. But it makes perfect sense for this franchise because yeah. the people become very obsessed with the yes. killers of the past. Yeah. Right? This is nothing new to the franchise. But the fact that Richie was able to acquire everything <laughs> everything when All you look around that room it is literally everything from the franchise oh my god which is it's great like, yeah for stream fans i could give yeah. a shit but even i'm like oh i know that i know that i know that we, we so did it when, cool. we, when yeah, we, watched we watched the trailer, the trailer. i was like oh that's this 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 yeah i love it i think that's really cool but yeah i mean like how easy it was for him to get it i don't know we get a we get a, a pretty definite age on Sam here, because I was wondering mm. how old she was supposed to be. But she says she was a freshman when Kirby was a senior. Kirby says she's 30, which would make Sam 26. Yeah. Right. So which would make which would make sense. Yeah. I mean that 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 seems about right. And then Tara Tara would be like 18, 19, 19 or so. 19. Because it's only supposed to be one year. Oh yeah, she's like 19. She's gotta be 19, yeah. right? And 18 or 19. College, yeah. Yeah. So. Um what do you think? How do you think Kirby is utilized. Um, I actually thought she was utilized pretty well. I like that she is introduced and you kind of start to suspect her because um, it's definitely like, you know, whenever uh, Mr. Um, what's his name? Kirsch? Sheriff Kirsch or whatever. Yeah, whatever whenever he uh, is like, can you like look up everything? Like get the FBI, like look up what you can on her. Yeah. And then he's like, she was never like she was fired or whatever. I definitely, when we saw it, like, in theaters, I was like, oh, what? <laughs> like, her? Yeah. So, but I, I liked seeing her, and I like, you know, the interactions that she has with the other characters as well as, like, a survivor of Ghostface. Um, you know, because, like, you ha we have Gail, obviously, and I think this film, on a, definitely on the rewatch, I disliked Gail in this, like, pretty significantly. I've typically been like i think kind of okay with her character like i do think that she serves a purpose in like the earlier films especially in like the original and everything but i liked seeing kirby um come in and kind of you know have her have her moments with everyone yeah gail's always a shit 
She is. And I think in this one, I really felt like, especially, and I think because like, of Dewey's death. Yeah. Yeah, you thought she would grow. Yeah, and I just think that her character is very stagnant and has not grown. And while, like I said, it does serve a purpose in other ones, and like there is a lovableness in some of the other ones to her too. Like I just felt really like icky about her in this. I'm just like she really only cares about like getting the story. Like that's it. Yeah. Like that's it. And she also, I mean, you could say like whatever people grieve in their own ways, and I know that her and Dewey haven't yeah. been together for a while, but it's yeah. like I don't know. Yeah. Just the way she handles everything in this, I didn't like. And I, I do love when Sam goes to punch yeah. her and she, like, Ducks and then one. Tara's like, <laughs> it's great. Yeah, that was good. Um, yeah, but Gail just is, is never going to, you know, be a good person. Yeah. It, it just is what it is. You think you're shooting me in the seventh? Probably. Yeah. But I hope she dies finally <laughs> because I really do feel like it's time for her to die because, like, Sydney's not in these. You know, like she was in the last one, but yeah, I mean, I like know. that they mention her, and I like that they kind of all agree in there. She, you know, Sydney uh, deserves her happy ending. Yeah, because she's got like a family on, and right? everything. Yeah, so I'm like, good. Sydney needs to like stay and do her own thing. Like she does not need to be brought back into it. Uh, they'll probably bring her back, but they probably will. At yeah, some point, right. Um, the ending of this movie takes place on Halloween. Mm. Um, and getting to see the yeah. So there are cool little nods in here on a second watch. Like, um, you know, they're watching uh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it's the, it's, the, it's the therapist. Yeah. And he's like, you're next. You're next. And he's looking right at him. Yeah. You're next. And then he's next. He, yeah. he, he is the next one to die. Uh, also, when the cop who is the killer, I'm fucking, I didn't write down his name, which is funny. Um, but yeah, Mr. Kirsch, mm -hmm. uh, when he agrees to like go after the killer with them, good acting on his part of like crying about his daughter's death when he came out. Oh, right. Sure. Like, yeah, you know, I like, honestly, both my kids are dead. I think, I think he's a pretty hammy actor in general, like that <laughs> actor, but like, I'm, I'm more talking about the character. Yeah. Um, but regardless, uh, <laughs> So there is also another good scene here where uh, they're trying to like get him on board to break the rules mm. and, and go after the killer vigilante style. And he like he agrees to it and he says he like kind of is looking away and then he looks straight at Sam and he's like, if you fuck with my family, you die. Yeah. And he looks right at her when he says it. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's, of course, you know, him telling her. Right. Like you killed my kid. Yeah. And you're dying. So I like that kind of stuff. Like second, you know, watches definitely help with that kind of stuff. For sure. So that's cool. Um, and um, I like the countdown of the dropping of the masks in reverse. Yeah, I do um, too. I like that. I like seeing all of the franchise being acknowledged mm -hmm. up on the on the blackboard and uh, when they're well, it's not a blackboard, a, a cork board or mm -hmm. whatever the hell to uh you know lay out all of the killers mm -hmm. from before mm -hmm. um and when this is something that happens in all the films it's just one of those things you have to go okay whatever but maybe they wear padding inside their masks but these things these guys always like get hit in the head oh, or they always yeah. fall and hit their face on something and then when we see them later they don't have any bruising on their face <laughs> yeah. no bloody noses nothing. no nothing they're, yeah. they're the totally are, fine they're padded they're padded they're, they're padded. Kevlar. They should be Kevlar. So when they shoot him in the head, he's like, ha ha. <laughs> um, and the, I like that they, they're like, oh, this is Ghostface secret lair where, you know, no one should know that a Ghostface fanatic has a lair here. And outside they have a Ghostface painted on the wall <laughs> that says, what's your favorite scary movie? I know it's a yeah. cool painting it or whatever, cool. but. That's not the greatest thing. It would be like Batman putting like a big bat signal or bat symbol, like paint it mm -hmm. on the side of his like mountain where he's got the bat cave yeah. inside and being like, well, I wonder where this place is. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can't find it. Can't find it. Um, I did think of something that you're probably going to like. So mm -hmm. with Billy, Billy looks old, right? Yeah. And so I was thinking about that. Now, I think I'm just doing the film a service here. But I was thinking about it and I was like, you know what? I actually like this idea that Sam has appropriately aged him up in her mind 
to be a father figure. It's funny because I was actually thinking about that too mm. when we were watching it. I was like, he looks old. Like, I wonder if she's projecting like this is what he would look like as my dad. Yeah. Like as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that as well. That's funny. Right, because they um, kind of try to de-age him, yeah, sort of, but, but it's like, no, he of... looks his age. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's us giving it more credit than they were intending, but I do Probably. I do like that interpretation of, like, she's seen pictures of her dad as a kid, and she's just making him, like, slightly older and everything, so, yeah. yeah. Um, and... Dewey's little theme when they're when they're reminiscing about him. Yeah. Um, Kirby and Mindy's little bonding oh, so moment. Cute. Love, it. I, love it. I disagree with their with their statements. <laughs> but I love I, that I, little I, back and forth. I don't disagree with them exactly. I just Nightmare Two is the best. <laughs> Candyman one rules <laughs> over any other Candyman, uh, and I am with Kirby that on the final chapter final chapter yeah. but my second favorite is the second one so good on good on them for that one um anyways i'm just being a geek I it's don't care. cute though like yeah. yeah seeing them geek out um and <clears throat> why can't they take the cop oh right so when they're going to like rush towards gail's house they steal oh, a cop yeah. car and he's working with them and they decide not to take the cop with them he says this something. makes no sense to me. I don't care what he said. I know. You take the cop and you have him drive. Yeah, absolutely. And also that scene was really confused. That was another kind of confusing one. Well, well, I guess it's the same one because it's the Gale scene. Yeah. But it's like they leave and it's daytime and then they get, they there, get there and night. it's night. So I don't know if that's a continuity. Full issue. day. It makes me think it is continuity because, yeah, they're going right there. And it's like it wouldn't. I, I guess. Although, I don't know. Maybe driving in New York, it does take hours to get anywhere. Like, if it's, like, rush hour and stuff. They are on the... No. They're like, we were in traffic for Gail five is not, hours. Gail is, not in the, in, Gail is not in that house with, for an hour with the killer. No. Okay, that is just nonsense. This is a continuity yeah. error, for sure. It is broad daylight. Yeah. And then they get in the car. This is, like, mirrors two, like I showed you. Yeah. Where the guy starts running from the mall, and when he gets there, the cops are already leaving. That makes literally no sense. Yeah, this is like the share. This is the sheriff's department leaving the freaking Haddonfield hardware store, like twelve hours after Michael broke in there. It's like these are just continuity errors, yeah. right? Um, and let's see. Um, so we get in the train. What we spotted, we get a Michael Myers, multiples. Mm -hmm. We get uh, an original Myers. We get a Rob Zombie Myers. We get a few Myers. We get a Pinhead. We get a Babadook. We get a Freddy. We get people from the movie Us. We get a Georgie with a balloon. Mm -hmm. We get the Grady sisters, not twins. They're not twins. Stop calling them the Grady twins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we get Danny from uh, Midsommar. Mm -hmm. We get a Jason, of course. Yeah. We get, this is the coolest one in the movie, which is sitting right next to i think uh, it's mindy i think so too but i it, it's a blink and you miss it right next to her just kind of just right here off the, right off the side you have someone dressed as john trent so cool. from in the mouth of madness with all of the black crayon the single black crayon that yeah. like can write all over the walls and his entire body <laughs> and all of his clothes the long and he's and there's still this much crayon left when yeah. he comes in but yeah he has all of the all of the that crosses. is the coolest super cool coolest freaking halloween costume i think i've ever seen in a film in my life yeah i love it so much when i saw it i was so geeking out yeah. hard i was like that's john trent yeah he had all of them like exact he had the big one on his forehead. He had all of them. All I was like, that is the coolest shit. So if, look out uh, for In the Mouth of Madness little reference in here. I wonder how they handled like the extras in this. If they were like, if Do they them yourself, yeah, yeah, or if they were like, come in like a horror costume. Because that would be really cool. If somebody great just question. Was, like, I'm going to be John Trent. Like somebody in the audience would be like, oh. <laughs> Yeah. We get a Billy the Puppet. Yep. We get a Sadoku or Sam Samara. I don't know. We'll call her Samara because there's Samara weaving in here. But obviously <laughs> in uh, Japan, it's Sadako. Yeah. And in, in the English version, it's Samara. Uh -huh. um, we I think we get a Greasy Strangler. Oh, yeah. You were saying that. I can't tell. Right. The, the blonde wig made it look like a greasy strangler. So those are all the ones that we caught. Please let us know if we missed any. I'm sure we did. There was a ton to look at. 
uh, and I was trying to see him as fast as I can, but the Mouth of Madness one is the coolest shit ever. And Sam uh, using her dad's knife and all that stuff. Oh, and, love and, it. Like, great choice. My favorite one. Love like, it. It's cool. I think he's underutilized here. I think the Dark Passenger thing would have been cool. And, and as I said, there's a lot of missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. Having the killer, that's something I would like. That's something I could see Christopher Landon doing. I could see him doing this whole new thing where we know where the killer is from the get go mm -hmm. and we get to see how he's manipulating them behind the scenes. Yeah. Right. Cause I would I, even I think love, that would be super interesting. I would even love like a sister sequel kind of thing from one of these movies where we get like a six screen 6.5. Oh yeah. Where we get to see all of, we get to see the whole movie, but from the killer's perspective, yeah. the whole movie. Oh sure. Yeah. That would be super cool. Like a bonus feature on the Blu-ray or something. Yeah. Right. That would be the coolest shit for yeah, me to absolutely. do it with each film too. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Each like film if you did it with each killer. film and that would be like a special bonus feature on the Blu-ray, that uh -huh. would be such an incentive for us geeks to be able to go watch the events of like them setting up the kills yeah. behind the scenes, then taking out and then learning like, yeah. oh, that was Stu that did that. Yeah, because like, it was Billy. Right. Yeah. I mean, like we were trying really hard to pay attention to like who it would have been. I think we did a pretty Three good options. job. Yeah, I think we did a pretty good job of it. But yeah, that would be awesome. They do. That. They do acknowledge and state certain kills in this. Yes, at the they end. They do. Yeah. Right. And that's the same in, like, I think pretty much every Scream. Sure. Right, where they're like, I did that or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so. So, that's it. Scream, Scream 6. six. Uh, anything more to say? I think we talked plenty. Uh, no. Yeah. Not right now. All right, guys. I wanted to, we will get back to Friday the 13th next week. Um, I just wanted to do this because we watched Friday 4 and in theaters. I couldn't take notes. And I'm retroactively now taking notes, even <laughs> yeah. though I've seen the film six trillion times. So we'll get it. We'll get it up. Soon. But I'm watching it bit by bit because we don't have the time. Yes. And, and I'm having to watch it on my own in like 10 minute clips here and there. And I'm taking like quick notes. Um, but it's going to be a good one. It is. I'm gonna, we're going to have it. fun for that one because uh, I think my previous review on that was like 20 minutes. Expect that one to be a lot longer than 20 minutes. Yeah. Because I have a lot to say. It's Friday 4. It's my favorite in the franchise. And Scream 6. You've been discussed. <laughs> We're done with you. <laughs> Looking forward to Scream 7. I'm hoping one of these will finally be the one that I'm like, I love this one. I hope so, too. Right? I mean, I love this franchise, you know, as you know. So I have not really had one that I'm like, I hate or anything, of course. So I don't hate any of them. But, I, I mean, I want one for like you that makes you like super, like super into the franchise. I like five and six more so. than one through four, for sure. Yeah. I would say four through six are easily better than one through three for me. I, I, okay, so it's probably, I mean, one and two mm -hmm. for sure. And then I could skip three and then four, five, and six for sure. Oh, like, I, I, I like three, three. I don't goofy. know. Three is goofy, but I, I love the original. I love it so much. Scream so. three is definitely the worst of the bunch, yeah. for sure. But, I, I agree. But I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. But I, I mean, these two new films, of course, like I'm super into them. I love all these new characters and everything that they're doing with the franchise. I, I feel like I do just as I guess a final note. I feel like the people involved in this are very clearly like. I feel like they're doing service to the franchise. I feel like that mm, there yeah. is care and yeah. like attention to detail and it's not just like let's make another screen movie like oh like I do feel like there's a love going into it and I really appreciate that. And can you guys in the comments below because trust me I've tried and we're going to get to it. But can you get on Kaylee's ass about the Scream TV series <laughs> cuz I the Scream we fan <laughs> that I am not have seen the entire Scream freaking TV series. So basically, and she hasn't. just make it so that we have enough time. Like, oh my god, that's the main thing. And then we'll watch everything. I've shown her the first episode twice now. I liked it. I liked it. We've already talked about this. I totally liked it. And I would definitely watch more. Yeah. Fine, tonight. We'll, <laughs> we're watching it tonight. And you're going to be like, but babe, we got so many other things we to do watch. Have some. Oh my god, I want to watch <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. We're done. Bye. Bye.